Fans, what's going on? Peter Reese here alongside the money. And this is no normal Saturday night as the Hurricanes already had a quarterback commitment earlier this week. But tonight is more than just a cherry on top as Cam Ward announces his commitment to the Hurricanes and really more than a commitment He's enrolling at Miami this week. Quite the turn of events after two weeks ago announcing he'd be going to the NFL draft. Did not end up hiring an NFL agent. D Money alongside me tonight. And obviously we've been covering this story for the last five, six weeks really. And what an ending to this saga probably the time where you were talking about cam ward the least right because talia was the name everybody was hearing and we were hearing about the waiver and everything else certain things behind the scenes and then out of nowhere get the bad signal people were worried if it was going to be like a 2026 you know guard or something like that and then it being the big name you know it's hard to see a true surprise these days as far as an announcement like that where nothing no one expects anything and that's what it was. So a really fun moment uh, on, a, on a Saturday night. You know, this goes back really since to when Ward entered the portal. That We've been talking about this. Um, really overshadowed signing day to a degree. It overshadowed the whole offseason. And now you could put this chapter to bed and really reflect on everything. It's been an amazing offseason for the Canes. Really an outstanding offseason now that it's ended with this. So going back to... I want to say December 6th, I put out an episode of The Bank. I think we recorded a bank. And I spoke to UM earlier that day. And I got the sense at that time, just to give a timeline, that really there were five quarterbacks that Miami had focused on. There was Talia, if he applied for the waiver. Michael Pratt, if he didn't go pro. And then the, the three high school names, or sorry, transfer portal names that were in the portal. Dylan Gabriel went to Oregon. Will Howard and Cam Ward. At that time, I was told that Cam Ward was really the number one option on that on that list. Now, the reason I didn't say there were one, option one, option two, option three, is because any one of those five guys, if they were available for, to Miami and they wanted to come, I think Miami would have taken them. They wanted somebody above that line and one of those five primetime guys. But if you were to really put them – on the spot and say those five, who do you want the most? It was Cam Ward at that time. Again, this is on December 6th. Miami was able to get the first visit from both Cam Ward and Will Howard. Again, if Will Howard would have committed at that time, they would have taken him. But if you gave him the true serum, Cam Ward was the number one guy based on what I was told at that time. They loved the fit. Cam Ward of Washington State played in the air raid. Uh, system and put up huge numbers. They loved his intelligence. You know, they thought if you were to really break down him and Howard, he was probably the better decision maker. Again, this is Miami's evaluation at the time. And I'm not saying this now they've gotten Cam Ward. These are things I heard before. So again, the decision making I think Cam Ward gave him the advantage over, for example, a Will Howard. They loved the fit and they loved just the talent. The guy could, could elude the rush, he had a great natural arm, great release, and great accuracy. Just a naturally talented thrower. So that's why they had Cam Ward at the top of their list, and they just thought he would fit in the best and, and give them the best chance. When after, you know, really the first time they thought they were going to get Cam Ward was after his visit because his visit went so well, they thought they were able to get to commit on that Wednesday. That did not happen. Again, signing day kind of – you focus on the class, which was a top five class, but you knew that this quarterback situation was looming. Um, they thought they had a great chance at Cam Ward on signing day. I heard that they basically thought they had him wrapped up. Ended up extending his decision to Christmas. At that point, I continue to hear great buzz on Cam Ward from Miami. I made the prediction on this show that they'd get Cam Ward. And I thought it would happen around that Christmas weekend, which is when he said he originally was going to announce. That didn't happen. Rolls into the new year, and he says he's going to go pro. And I think Miami was taken aback by that. They really locked in on him as the top target from the beginning. 
and had gotten multiple feelings or all, during the process that he was going to come to Miami. So that was a, a real tough blow. He did not sign with an Asian at that time. And I actually spoke to Miami that day that he committed to the draft. And they said, look, we have different options at play, kind of went through some of those. And they said, and Cam Ward, you know, I predict he's going to, he is going to ultimately play college football because that's what he wants to do when he wants to be at Miami. That was in January 1st, I think was the, the two weeks ago uh, when that happened. And I, again, remember that conversation vividly. I was in the Virgin Islands, just overlooking the Cove, uh, Coral Bay. And, uh, and Miami was confident they'd be able to get back in this. Time passes again, back and forth. There's negotiations going on. There's this, you know, personal decision making going on. It's a tough decision for Cam and his family. And then ultimately today, as the Talia buzz picks up, I heard there was a long conversation. Also, I heard Will Rogers, Will Rogers was was being engaged as well. I mean, you know, making every effort to land an experienced P one starting or P five starting quarterback. But then ultimately, Cam War makes a decision today, and they are over the moon with this. Reese Poffenbarger, who committed, we did the podcast. You can check it out on YouTube. Uh, I'm told as of now, he's coming, he's staying with Miami, and he has a year of eligibility after this, so he could compete next year as well on top of being a, a player that helps us this year. Um, so a lot of the excitement is still about him, and that was a smart take, I thought, by Miami when they didn't know this was going to turn out this way. But Miami ultimately landed their number one target. On top of landing the top quarterback at the FCS level, they landed the top – portal target uh an fbs quarterback so really bolstered the room and the the folks couldn't be happier because this was a high stakes negotiation a high stakes recruitment really made it hard to talk about anything else on Kansas inside for for th- a month and uh it en- ended up the way that i think miami fans wanted i think one of the big turning points d as well was the fact that cam didn't end up getting the senior bowl invite from what I understand expected or hoped to get the opportunity to play in the senior bowl, got the shrine game invite, which is a great opportunity as well. But, you know, I, I, I understand he, 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 he said that he was probably, you know, getting a day two to, you know, second to third round projections. And he has a real opportunity to improve his stock next year. But at that position in this class, I would probably expected him to be a day three pick this year. And the fact he didn't get that senior boy invite, I think, was a, a bit indicative of that. And I think that's a moment where he had to really look himself in the mirror and say, OK, I know what I'm capable of doing and becoming. If I go to a, a program like Miami, surround myself with the talent that. I think I can I can have over there the offensive line in front of me have it have a chance to do something special which he said in the interviews since you know coming out now but I think that was a I think that was a potential turning point here but to me this whole thing epitomizes Mario Cristobal right at never giving up until the the, the very end until he literally has no eligibility because the kid announced he put out a video that he was declaring for the draft and still these these two weeks later mario and 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 his staff has been continuing to work behind closed doors right because we haven't really heard anything about it and we haven't said anything about it it's been very hush hush like you said in today's era where everything tends to leak out pretty crazy how this just popped out of nowhere. Yeah. And from what I, my conversation um, after the commit, I don't think it was something that they were sitting on. I think this is something that came together pretty fast at the end. Um, So really the player cam ward and Pete, I know you're familiar. You've talked to scouts about him. I think I talked a little bit about some of the things they like, you know, negative I'm seeing in the chat. Yes, he did have a lot of fumbles, led the nation in fumbles. I think some of that, he doesn't have the strongest hands in the world. He's not like a Michael Penix where his hands completely cover the, the football. I think that's something that he can't change. But playing with a much better offensive line 
I know it was one of the the things you mentioned, Pete, that attracted him to Miami is the ability to play with great offensive linemen that he did not have at Washington State. Take some pressure off both with the running game and then also just straight pass protection. So that should help some of his fumbling problems. I'm told his decision making was something that Miami really liked as far as, you know, not the fumbles, but the where to go with the ball. I thought they really liked um, what he could do. So I'm seeing a couple questions here about wide receiver. And every time I ask somebody at Miami about wide receiver in the last six weeks, what I heard was, you know, in terms of the portal, it's very hard to get a portal wide receiver when you have uncertainty at quarterback. These are guys that want to know who's going to throw them the ball before they make a commitment to play their last year of college, potentially, um, at Miami. So this was a holdup to that. And I think now that you've resolved the quarterback question with a name brand like Cam Ward that people know, people would just pull up the highlights. This is, this is a big name, a big get. I think you're going to see Miami really active with portal receivers. The name I would watch right now is CJ Daniels. Uh, it was reported earlier today that he was most likely headed to LSU. Obviously LSU knows receivers are putting two in the first round probably this year and many in the past. I would not be surprised to see Miami get back in the game with Liberty wide receiver transfer CJ Daniels. Again, LSU's there. They they just about have him, but Miami's going to try to snatch him snatch him away from LSU uh, with this Cam Ward news. Will it happen? I don't know. It's not a done deal, but I, I know Miami's in that game. And, and beyond that, Miami will be active with port, to add a, a top portal wide receiver now that they've gotten um, Cam Ward. That could be someone's committed to another school, by the way, and they flip him. You know, those are things that they can do. There's no binding commitments, as you saw, because as Gabby uh, Rudy mentioned, Mario just flipped uh, Cam Ward from the NFL. So these commitments are not binding, even in the portal. So Miami could uh, flip somebody. But I think the name I'm watching currently, as far as the immediate focus, CJ Daniels at, um, out of Liberty. Shout out to the 260 plus on the live right now. We're past midnight here, now coming into Sunday morning. It took until, I mean, January 4th, we're, we're in January 14th now, but it took until two days before the NFL draft deadline for Mario Cristobal to get it done. But he has his number one target at the quarterback position in Cam Ward. Remember to hit that like button, the subscribe button as well. We have a ton of exciting stuff coming here on Kane's Insight. But again, the news tonight and now moving forward as Miami looks to build around Cam Ward at the quarterback position, um, Mario and his staff, Shannon Dawson, really excited about what he can do in this air raid offense and a lot of the concepts that he's already familiar with from Washington State. Yeah, and I wonder how much more will lean into that air raid background of Coach Dawson. Obviously, it was a hybrid this year, as you saw some of the power running game stuff that comes from Mirabal and crystal ball. And then you saw what Dawson did air raid wise. Are you going to be more of a pure air raid given that your quarterback is used to that? He's a guy that you're trusting. He's a guy you're paying a lot of money. You know, are you going to put the game more into a guy like Cam Ward's hands um, and spread it out? And again, do kind of what you saw Washington, Washington state. That will be interesting to see, by the way, like Pete mentioned, like and subscribe, we are building a, a new studio. Um, I was going to have to do something else. Maybe do like a golf podcast or something if this quarterback situation went haywire, but it resolved nice. So we'll keep it a Canes show uh, in studio. So you guys are looking forward to a lot, lot, lot of free content. We're about ready to announce um, shortly what we're planning, but there's going to be a lot of free content coming your way this year for Canes Inside Fans in 2024. One thing I wanted to talk about is we were so focused on this quarterback situation that we really missed or didn't appreciate, I think, a lot of things that happened in this offseason. You bring back a Jalen Rivers, right? A left tackle. You didn't know you are going to do that. Add a Zach Carpenter to what you already have with Francis Malanoa, Ines Cooper, you know, McCoy, Okanlola. You really solidify it was going to be an excellent offensive line with those two additions or one addition and one retention. Restrepo, who we thought was going to probably leave with TVD, his best friend, comes back 
I think everybody now realizes that Restrepo is one of the top receivers in the country. That's what the stats say. PFF has him up there. You know, he's proven it, I think, on the field. That's a huge addition on top of a port- any portal guy you bring in. Bringing Restrepo back is enormous. Cam Ward is going to love Restrepo. Um, every quarterback does. Jakari did as well in the bowl game. So those kind of additions went under the radar. Elijah Alston, who committed uh, earlier this week, they think he's a 10-digit sack guy um, out of Marshall, the defensive end, linebacker, you know, pass rush specialist. They think he's a 10-plus sack guy, elite motor, uh, and a lot of twitch. You saw his 96-yard or whatever the interception return he had and the speed he had uh, in that highlight we posted on the Canes Insight Twitter. You know, Marley Cook out of Middle Tennessee State, um, C.J. Clark, defensive tackle out of NC State. Really, with those two defensive tackles and then Alston on the outside, I heard these guys were just extreme high-motor players, big-time character guys that they're excited to add to the room. They're very focused on character in the portal. Now, these are guys that were productive, so you're not taking you know um, walk-ons, but these are guys that bring a character element to them and a motor element to that defensive line to really teach the – Justin Scott's and Armando Blunt's and Marquise Lifeless of the world, how to go about their business in college. So you're adding a lot of character with your portal guys. And now with this ward piece, the biggest piece put in, you really see the off season as a whole. You, know you can appreciate speaker. it. Yeah. You can appreciate it. You're not stressing about it. I lost sleep over this. Now you got, um, again, the receiver piece is still a missing piece. I think that'll be solved shortly. Safety. There's still probably some work to do, but most of the work is done with this Cam Ward edition. The shout out to the basketball team as well tonight, um, as obviously we're live here and big win for them on the road against Virginia Tech. Had a couple of rough back to back losses, especially that that game against Louisville the other day at home. But before that, on the road against Wake Forest. But nice bounce back win for them today. Have a couple people commenting on that. Um, but again, I, big pickup tonight. And like you said, every time a commitment would pop from the portal or, you know, even some of these younger commitments, right. But especially from the portal, it would be like, well, nice pickup, but who's the quarterback going to be? What's, what's the quarterback situation looking like? And then you see the Poffin Barger commitment and everyone says it's a good addition to the quarterback room, but. Right away when it happened, you dropped the bank, and then we also did a show, and the sentiment was everyone's excited about it, tons of talent being added to the room there, but if they have the opportunity to bring another guy in, which obviously Taulia was was a name that people were speculating, but Miami had continued to be – to, to work on Ward behind the scenes here. And it did come together last second here, this, this uh, you know, this announcement, but the line of communication was open, right? So this was something that they were leaving on the table. I, I believe we even said that on the, on the pop and Barger podcast. I know we were talking about it that day that we, you know, we could circle back to Ward, um, the surprise to me is just that the Talia buzz really picked up right before Ward committed. Um, so that's what was interesting about that. And I'm told, you know, that was real buzz and Talia was a real option. Will Rogers was a real option, but the number one player from the beginning was Ward. So when he was ready to come around, that's the direction they went, locked it up um, and, you know, and now moved on. Um, but I think it's going to be very interesting to see what this offense looks like with the investment you've made in Cam Ward because Cam Ward is not cheap. I don't think, I think everybody can kind of figure out that there's a lot of NIL discussion here and Cam Ward is going to get compensated as one of the top quarterbacks in the nation. That's what Miami's valuing as. So how much freedom is it going to have? You know, TBD it was very unusual to see a quarterback throw so many interceptions with protection like he had. That was just very strange that I I would never have guessed if you gave 
TVD that much protection and healthy skill position guys that he would throw interceptions like he did. So what are we going to see from Ward with that kind of protection and what kind of trust is he going to get from the coaching staff? Also on the basketball, you know, my kid was yelling at me because I kept putting on the basketball game instead of the Dolphins game, flipping back. And, you know, he doesn't understand that we've seen the Dolphins story play out. I knew how that game was going to go. Kane's basketball has got a little more uh, cachet as a blue blood, you know? So great win for them. They needed that win. That Omir and one was a huge moment. You could tell it meant a lot to the team. Got a little lucky with the Keyshawn George bank in, but um, they needed that win. They were able to make enough plays down the stretch. I still think they need a little bit more in between scoring. You know, Wuga and, and George are just so reliant on that three point shot. Um, but you take the win and uh, keep getting better. Uh, my 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 concern right now, D, with this team is you had. Wong and Miller last year at the end of the shot clock who could really get to the lane one-on-one ISO get to their spots hit a shot you have a lot of jump shooters on this team right now and Omir is not a jump shooter but when the game tightens up late those post-ups are are not necessarily you know go-to plays right and that's what I'm looking for. Who's going to be that guy to step up late to hit the shots, to create the one-on-one looks. It's a lot of jump shots right now, a lot of season left. And I expect this team to keep getting better as we get into the meat of ACC play, but excited to see them grow. And Keyshawn George, man, I, I just see his confidence growing every game. That was lucky result from that shot that he took there, but man, he's been, uh, he's been getting better and better as the season wears on. Yeah. I think Bensley Joseph is probably the best driver on the team right now, in my opinion, as far as attacking, uh, getting some comments, you know, we're talking college basketball. We just got this huge football commit and I get it, but you know, we are the home of Kane's college basketball and, and we want you guys to know that Miami hurricanes basketball, we plan to even do more than we're doing now. Um, and really, show you guys that we are the home of, of Kane's basketball talk, Kane's baseball talk, and definitely Kane's football talk. Um, this off season, man, you know, I'm the hype, I'm the hype merchant, right? So I was trying to figure out ways to, to hype the hype everybody this summer. If this quarterback situation went sideways, it's going to be a lot easier now. Also, you know, the, the thing about this off season is who's your first game, the Florida Gators. So, Going into that game with a younger, more unproven quarterback, a guy like Poffenbarger who hasn't played D1, a guy like Emery or Jakari who still are really young quarterbacks in terms of experience, you're in so much better shape taking a guy like Ward who's not only been electrifying with his talent but has started two full seasons at the college level, the P5 level. He's played the Washingtons, played well against teams like Washington, which, again, the the second-best team in the country this year, uh, Oregon State. Um you know, good, good, good programs. He, USC teams that have a lot of talent. He's produced against them. So going against a team like Florida, um, the Florida Gators, which is really a second-rate, you know, below 500 program, um, should be no problem for him. And uh, it's going to be a fun off-season seeing how we adjust to the increased talent level and how we look at going into that Florida game. Because if you're a Florida Gator fan, uh, this was not a very good day. For you or or Florida State fan, you know, listen, Florida State's top target in the portal. They said it themselves was Ward. Their top target was not DJ. You know, FSU getting their second quarterback target. Miami's getting the first. They've been getting second rate guys in the portal. Miami did not want those South Florida guys that went to, to FSU. No Jared versus in this class for Florida State. Um, you know, it's that defensive tackle Fisk. No, no one like that. No one like Keon Coleman. This has not been that kind of portal class for FSU. And at the quarterback position, they settled for somebody that Miami didn't want. And Miami took their top target here today. So in terms of Miami, Florida, Florida State, this was a huge move for the balance of power within the state. Yeah, and, and Florida State's NIL operation, you know, it's obviously been discombobulated up there and 
it's now under the microscope nationally as we saw their their violations yesterday yeah listen you talk about the nil program florida's checks are bouncing to rashada fsu is getting violations plus they have a reputation for being cheap they're you know players are jumping in the portal just to renegotiate with florida state you're not seeing that nonsense here in miami and listen people always ask me about the nil program and i say look at the results top five class when you went seven and six after going five and seven you know what's that tell you um cam ward the most pursued quarterback in the country from the portal goes to miami what, what is that you? you know what the funniest thing is to me i mean it's it's out there that the ncaa investigated ruiz and life wallet and everything and guess what they went in there and there was nothing to find everything was done everything has always been done by the books and it's just it, it's funny because you see the florida state coaches and staff members i should say because it's it was really only one guy right who went on there and you know said miami was paying for the players and you turn around and florida state's the one who is who's getting who's getting hammered here by the by the ncaa so yeah no, this is – salute to our, the NIL team, you know, Zach, Fonzie, all these guys that put together Kane's connection um, for keeping it clean and also, again, a very successful program of NIL. The proof is in the pudding. There's a lot of secrecy around NIL. Just look at the results, and you tell me what's happening. Obviously, some of that's tomorrow's great recruiting. That's a lot of that is what Miami offers as a school, as a program, but – you have to have your whole house in order. Miami's NIL house is in order. And let this cam thing, I think, should put all those questions to bed. By the way, a lot of questions on Mario as a portal recruiter. To land the number one portal quarterback, Cam Ward, I think is a major statement. Um, you know, a lot of teams needed – Ohio State needed a quarterback. You know, USC needed a quarterback. Um, Michigan probably needs a quarterback. Uh there's a lot of schools that need a quarterbacks that have been doing a lot of winning and Miami was able FSU, you know, Miami was able to land the top portal quarterback. I think that's huge. And I think the whole portal class, the top portal center, Miami top portal quarterback, Miami two top portal defensive tackles, Miami. You keep Maunoa at linebacker. You keep rivers, you keep Restrepo. Now you just need that. I think a safety and a receiver is where you, you watch. I think receiver, I think that part might move a little quickly now that we got Ward. Safety, maybe that extends past the, the spring period. But you don't have that much homework left. You know, just one guy, maybe a big-time player in another position that just fits, s- slips through the cracks, and, and, become, and enters the portal. You know, you're not, you're not building the whole house like FSU has to do. You've got great high school kids. You've got your quarterback. You've got your center. You've got his defensive tackles lined up. Now it's just one or two to get you to to where you need to be. And I think Miami's in really, really good shape as far as the, the program building. Well, Canes fans, appreciate everyone who has uh, been on here with us tonight. As we're up over 300 listeners, any last questions, get them in here. But huge pickup for Mario Cristobal and staff tonight in Cam Ward at the quarterback position and man that quarterback room is looking pretty interesting moving forward d some real depth being built there and a couple of these guys that you didn't want to have to rely on but you say man they have some real talent some building blocks it can start to really get them some reps in in spring now coming up and try to develop them moving forward but Nice room there uh, as we look ahead. Yeah, and I'm excited for Poffenbarger. Now, look, who knows? Anything can happen in the portal, especially, you know, because these things happen quick. People reach out, et cetera. But as, as of now, as of January 14th, the latest I've heard, Poffenbarger is going to be staying with us. Excited to see what he brings. You know, we weren't lying. We were saying we excited about some of the flashes. Watch his Idaho game. Um, if you want to see what talent he has, obviously Idaho is not, you know, Ohio State, but 
they're a talented team for that level. His teammates are FCS, and he really made a lot of plays. So hope he sticks with it. I'm told, he, again, as of now, he will. He has a big opportunity. And if Miami's quarterback room, from where it was when they got there to now, I think is a, a much more exciting dynamic room. And by the way, one thing I want to say real quick before we leave about Cam Ward, even after all, there was a lot of pump fakes here, a lot of starts and stops where Miami thought they were going to get him and didn't. And they could have easily been like, screw this kid. You know, this kid's a, a, we don't like this kid. That never happened. Every time I thought to Miami, they said, good kid, great kid. And he's the best player. Even when they were frustrated about maybe not getting a commit when they thought they might, it's not like they were like, you know, cursing the kid. They were very consistent. This guy's a great kid, and he's by far the best player that they were after at that position. So, you know, they were consistent the whole time. They were dogged. Mario was relentless, did not take no for an answer. And, uh, you know, by the way, shout out Heel919. Ask a question, man. Uh, but appreciate your support. Let us know we can help. We can we can answer for you. Um, but again, appreciate your support. Heal nine nine one nine. But yeah, th- this is a great day. Again, thanks everybody for the kind words. This is a celebratory day, and I think we can breathe a little bit this off season. As as I can breathe too, because we just spent a lot of money in the studio. We're going to be doing a lot more shows. Um, so it's a lot more to talk about when you get your quarterback all all set up. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, have a lot more content like this coming up, and you're going to see a lot more of Kane's insight on the regular, on your YouTube feeds, on your podcast feeds as well. Appreciate everyone who's been on this live channel tonight. D Money, any last parting thoughts here? It's going to be a nice – I'm sure the coaches are going to be – Having a nice uh, night's worth of sleep, this has been kind of an existential question. So to have this resolved, now you can really focus on what's happening in 2024. And it's going to be a very exciting spring because that room is much different and more dynamic than it was. And I think the biggest difference when you look at this room now, especially if you keep Offenbarger, mobility. So we're going to see how these mobile playmaking type quarterbacks, Ward and Poffenbarger, uh, really impact the room. It's going to be fun to watch, and uh, you know, I'm excited, man, to see how the how this team looks. There's a, a lot of highlights you can watch with Cam Ward, man. He's he's put some stuff on tape. So enjoy it and uh, stay locked on Kane's insight because it's going to keep on rolling. Martin Dubay, man, shout out to my guy in Africa, man. We got Afcon starting at 9 a.m in America this morning. So, uh, you know, best of luck to your country out there. Hey, what's, fans, country? Which, which, what's, what's this country? Uh, Zim, I believe it's Zimbabwe. There you go. Zimbabwe soccer. That's how we get down here. We're going deep. Um, or Botswana. It's one, it's one or the other, man. Well, so we're going deep here on, a, on a African soccer, Botswana soccer. Everybody, take care. And uh, go Canes. Go Canes. Appreciate everyone for tuning in tonight. Thank you all.